We're working on problem 4.4 of the Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2 final exam practice problems. We've learned a lot about the problem so far, and a few times I've mentioned as we went along that it was kind of neat that once we've chosen a root for this, this tree that we're constructing that represents our algorithm, we divide the initial problem into two subproblems, and optimal solutions to those two subproblems put together form an optimal solution for the overall problem. But we don't know which one is the right root, so in the end we probably want to try out all of the possibilities of roots. That's what we did by hand on the previous problem and find the one that gives us the best, best solution. As we try those out in a big problem, you know, imagine we chose index 53 as the root. Okay, that's going to break the problem down into two big subproblems. And to solve those two subproblems, we're going to try out all the roots of those subproblems. But here's the interesting thing. Visualize that huge problem where you choose maybe this is the root. And then maybe when you're solving this subproblem on the right, maybe you choose this is the root on the right. And then you will end up solving this subproblem right here. And you want an optimal solution to that subproblem. Right? Whatever the optimal solution to that subproblem is, that's what you want to hang off of this subtree root right here, which is itself hung off of this root. But there's another possibility. What if you chose this is the root? That might be the right choice, right? And then what if you chose this one over here as the subtree root on the left? That might be the right choice. You would end up with the same subproblem to solve, this same subproblem again. So here's the property that we've discovered in this problem. The property we've discovered is that optimal solutions to the subproblems build together to produce optimal solutions to the overall problem, and as we recursively solve the problem, trying out all these different roots, we're going to end up solving the same subproblem over and over and over again. And every time we solve it, it's going to have the same solution. That sounds like a job for memoization or dynamic programming. Because we keep solving the same problem over and over again. The basic insight in memoization and dynamic programming is that you record the answer to a problem so that you can use it the next time you see that problem. Okay, we keep seeing the same problems over and over again, and if we just write a naive recursive solution to this problem, we're going to keep solving the problem over and over again. So all that discussion, what it suggests is a couple of things. First of all, there should be a way to write a recursive solution to this problem that's actually pretty small. Right? The recursive solution to this problem, roughly speaking, what it needs to say is try every root. Given that you're trying you know, this one as the root, solve the subproblems recursively using the algorithm that we're describing right now, and then put together the solution, see what the cost of that is, and if that's the best cost that you've found so far for all the roots you've tried so far, keep it around. Maybe it'll get beaten by another root later on, but whichever cost is best, for whichever route you get the best cost, that's the one you're actually going to use. So that's insight number one. And insight number two is that recursive algorithm is going to be horribly inefficient. But the reason it'll be horribly inefficient is because we'll solve the same problem over and over again, which means we can make it more efficient by trading off space for time. We can record our partial solutions and then reuse those partial solutions when we run into them later. So this is going to be a memoization problem or a dynamic programming problem. OK, having had all those insights, let's see what this problem actually asks us. And the reason I said all of that is because this is what I'd be thinking at this point. If I were solving this problem, I'd be like, ah, oh, yes, it's recursive. I can make a recursive solution, and the recursive solution is going to be horrible. Yay! Right? That's how you should feel when you realize that you're going to solve the same subproblem over and over again. The recursive solution is horrible, yay, because you know exactly how to solve that issue. You trade off some memory so that the recursive solution becomes efficient. So what's it actually asking us to do here? Complete this recurrence for the minimum worst case total probe cost for the subarray a i dot dot j. That is to say the subarray that includes indexes i, i plus 1, i plus 2, i plus 3, blah 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 blah, up to like j minus 4, j minus 3, j minus 2, j minus 1, j. In other words, all the indices from i to j, including both i and j. 
Okay. That recurrence, that's basically going to be a recursive algorithm that finds the minimum total probe cost. So we fill out this recurrence and we're set. And happily, we've actually been given a really, really key piece of this recurrence. Uh, actually, the most important pieces of this recurrence that we've been given. Everybody see them? Take a look. Where are they? They are right here. That's more important than anything else. Give a name to the quantity you're looking for and understand what parameters define the different possibilities for that quantity. Okay, so we gave a name to the quantity we're looking for. We're looking for a minimum worst case total probe cost. And given two parameters, i and j, that tells us exactly which subproblem we're working on. Okay, because we're always going to be working on some contiguous subarray of the original array of points. That's because the points come in sorted order by value. Since we know the points come in sorted order by value, if we've probed something over here in the array, and we've probed something over here in the array, but we haven't probed anything in this section right here, we're going to have to solve the problem for this subarray. And that subarray can be defined by its first index up to its last index. And that will get us right to the subarray. So we need two parameters in order to specify any subarray that we might be interested in. We will never be interested in anything that can't be specified by those two parameters. So that is by far the most important part of the problem to figure out. It was given to us. That cheats us of our birthright to solve problems. I apologize. Uh, but uh, hopefully you can go off and solve another problem and figure out the parameters on your own. In the meantime, we've got that. There's actually something else that's given to us which is really, really useful, which is this piece right here. It says we're going to need another variable, k, and we're going to let k range all the way from i up to j. That's what the minimum over i less than or equal to k less than or equal to j means. It means for all k ranging from i up to j, find the minimum value of whatever this quantity in here is. We don't know what that quantity is. We'll have to figure it out. That corresponds very nicely to what I was saying earlier. I was saying that given an array here, let me, let me just clear this array out here given an array that we're working on, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to try out roots. We're going to try like that as the root. And we're going to try out all the other possibilities as roots until we find the root that's the best one. And which root is the best one? It's the one that has the minimum overall cost, the minimum worst case total probe cost. That's what this is saying right here. k is the index of the root. And we're going to try out all the possible values for k. What are the possible values? Well, the root could be the leftmost index, or it could be the next one, or the next one, or the next one, or the next one, all the way up to the rightmost index. So we've got that machinery in place already. This is trying all the values of roots. Well, given a particular value for the root, what is the minimum worst case total probe cost for the subarray? Well, here's our root. You know, this is index k. We're going to pay the cost for k. Right? We're stuck with paying the cost for k. We, we've got to probe k. And then we're going to pay the worst minimum worst case total probe cost for the left, and we're going to pay the minimum worst case total probe cost for the right. The overall minimum worst case total probe cost will be the cost of probing k because we've decided that's the route that we're trying. Now remember, we've decided it temporarily, but this minimum over i less than or equal to k less than or equal to j means we'll try out all the possibilities for k and we'll pick whichever one is best. Okay, But having tried this one out, uh, we're going to owe the cost for k. We've got to probe k. And then how do we find out the minimum worst case cost for these two things? Well, c is going to give that to us. So we're going to be charged the cost of k. I'm actually going to put that in the middle because I like the way it reflects the fact that k is the root in the middle. And then we're going to add in the cost on the left, which is c of i comma k minus 1, because we don't have to worry about k again. So this index right here is k minus 1. And this index over here is i, because that was the leftmost index in the problem. And how about the cost on the right? Well, this index just after k, that's k plus 1. And this index over here on the right is j. So that's the minimum worst case total probe cost from k plus 1 up to j. 
That is the core of the solution to this problem. All that's left at this point is we need to figure out under what circumstances do we do this recursive solution and where do we bottom out into a base case. Well, the easy base case is actually the trivial case that I kind of wanted to do earlier, but the, the problem specification didn't let us do, and that's where we have no points at all. If there are no points at all in our array, then uh, what are we going to pay in probe cost to find a particular target? Well, whatever target you give me, I'm going to say it's not there for zero probe cost. So I want my base case to be zero cost. And when am I going to get to that point? I'm going to get to that point when I have an empty array. Uh, so what might that be? That might be when i is equal to j. But when i is equal to j, I actually have an array that goes from i up to j. That's an array with one entry in it. So by convention, I'm going to say when i is less than or equal to j, I'm going to do this top thing. And when i is greater than j, so when the subarray is empty, I'm going to do the bottom thing and say the cost is 0. And this effectively is my recursive solution. I hope at this point in your computing careers, you can look at this recurrence and you can say, hey, that wouldn't be that hard to write up as a piece of code. You know, C is going to be a function. Uh, I'm going to need the array as a parameter. I only said I and J matter as parameters, but you'll probably want the array too. Okay, or maybe you're writing in an object-oriented language and the array is a field of the object you create and then i and j are parameters to a function that you call to, to retrieve the minimal worst case total probe cost for that array. Whichever, you basically need a, a global array, effectively. And i and j are parameters that change. And then inside of the function, it looks to me like there's going to be maybe a loop where you try all the values of k and you find the best one.